Hello, little scientists. It's Miss Gisa, and today we're going to continue talking about this little guy. That's right, praying mantises. The story I have for you today is called Praying Mantises, written by Larry Dane Brimmer. And don't forget to watch till the end because there'll be an activity at the end of the story. The Hunter. A praying mantis is perched on a stem near a flower. It is hunting for a meal. Do you see it? It's pretty camouflaged. The mantis's green color blends in well with the surrounding leaves and twigs. This protects the mantis from birds, bats, and other animals that might want to eat it. It also helps the mantis catch its prey. It eats other insects and sometimes small tree frogs. A butterfly stops at a flower to drink nectar. It does not see the mantis waiting nearby. The mantis stays perfectly still. It is a patient hunter. It waits for just the right moment. Then the mantis strikes out with its spiny front legs and snatches the butterfly. It strikes so fast that the human eyes cannot detect it. Now the mantis eats the wriggling meal it holds in its powerful front legs. Mantises eat only live prey. If it drops part of the butterfly, the mantis will not pick it up. After it eats, the praying mantis grooms itself almost like a cat. It cleans its front legs. Then it uses first one front leg, then the other to clean every part of its head. Clean eyes and its antenna or feelers will help it find another meal. A praying mantis is like other insects in many ways. Its body is divided into three parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. It has six legs and two large compound eyes. These eyes are made up of thousands of lenses or facets. Each lens is like a separate eye. A tough outer shell called an exoskeleton protects the mantis's body like a suit of armor. But praying mantises are different from other insects in some ways. A praying mantis can turn its triangular head over its shoulder to see its prey and its enemies. If you walk past a mantis, it will turn its head to watch you. No other insect can do this. Its sharp mouth parts are made for chewing live prey and its two long thin antennae help it find food. The legs and wings of a mantis are attached to the thorax. A mantis has three pairs of legs. The front pair has spines and hooks that catch and hold prey. A mantis usually folds these legs as if it were saying its prayers. This is why people call it a praying mantis. The other two pairs of legs are used for moving around on twigs and branches. Usually, mantises move slowly, waiting and watching patiently for prey to come to them. Mantises can fly, but they also spread their wings to frighten away enemies. Many kinds of mantises also have a split on the underside of the thorax. This is the mantis's ear. Scientists believe that mantises are the only animals with just one ear. When a mantis is in flight, the special ear tells it if bats are nearby. The minute a mantis hears a bat, it flies in the opposite direction to avoid being captured. The abdomen of the mantis has several segments or parts. The male mantis, which is usually smaller than the female, has eight segments in its abdomen. The female has only six. The female also has a tube called an ovipositor for laying eggs. Praying mantises have various ways of protecting themselves. One way is by using camouflage. They blend in with their surroundings. Their color and thin bodies make them hard to see. Some types of mantises look like green twigs Others look like bark or dead leaves. One of the rarest is the Asian orchid mantis. 
it blends in with the pink tropical flowers. Entomologists, scientists who study insects, call mantises mantids. They say there are about 1,800 different kinds of mantids in the world. Most of them live in warmer climates, but a few kinds are found in colder places. Some entomologists say praying mantises are related to cockroaches. Others say they are more like grasshoppers and crickets. But most scientists now agree that mantids make up a group of their own. Three kinds of praying mantises are common to North America. The European mantid, the Chinese mantid, and the Carolina mantid. The Carolina mantid is native to North America. The others probably arrived here with cargo in a ship. No one knows for sure. By late summer, the abdomen of a female praying mantis is full of eggs. She is ready to have a family, but she needs a male to help her. Scientists think female mantises produce a chemical that attracts males. A male mantis senses this chemical and knows the female will welcome him. The male then spreads his wings wide and curls up his abdomen to get the female's attention. If the female likes what she sees, she holds out her front legs. Scientists think this is a signal that lets the male know she will not harm him. After they mate, the male takes off with a flying leap. For the male mantis, there is danger in mating. Usually he does not leap far enough away and the female eats him. Now the female mantis must find a safe place to lay her eggs. She usually chooses a stem or branch well above the ground. She then hangs upside down and foam begins to flow from the end of her abdomen. Her abdomen moves in circles to form an egg case called an uthica out of the foam. The egg case is about the size of a walnut. It hardens quickly and makes a cozy home for 100 to 300 eggs. The female mantis makes several such egg cases before winter comes. A female mantis does not raise her young. In fact, she never meets them. Once she has laid her eggs, her work is done. She will not live much longer. In the spring, the weather begins to warm up. Soon, hundreds of tiny praying mantises push through the slits in the bottom of the egg case. These young mantises, called nymphs, are no bigger than mosquitoes. They wriggle out of the sacs that protect them as they grew inside the egg case. Then they dangle down from thin white threads to the ground and hurry for shelter. Nymphs look like tiny versions of their parents. The only difference is that nymphs do not have fully formed wings. Right after a nymph hatches, its hard skin, the exoskeleton, is already feeling tight. So the nymph sheds it in order to grow. This is called molting. The nymph hangs upside down from a twig or stem. It splits open its old skin and wriggles free. In a few hours, its new skin hardens into a new exoskeleton. Now the nymph is ready for life on its own and ready for its first meal. A young mantis is born knowing how to survive. Its front legs are ready to catch and hold its prey. Its sharp mouth parts are ready to bite and chew. Before their first day is done, some mantises will eat other nymphs alive to survive. By fall, the nymphs will be ready to have babies of their own. We may find some things about praying mantises disturbing, their looks or their habit of eating each other. But for all their unusual habits, these backyard hunters are part of nature's careful balance. All right, now let's go take a look at the life cycle of a praying mantis. All right, my little scientists, let's review the life cycle of a praying mantis. 
Hopefully you learned some new things that you didn't know about praying mantises. Um, like all life cycles, how does the life cycle of a praying mantis start? Yes, that's right, with eggs. So remember, the mama praying mantis lays a bunch of eggs, and here they are soft eggs. But they turn into a hard egg case, and it's hard, and that protects the eggs. Eventually, the nymphs start to come out of that egg case, and they start to grow bigger and bigger as they're eating more and more. And then they slowly get bigger and bigger and finally become an adult. So now you have some activities that I put in your packet this week that you can do at home with the praying mantis life cycle. If you haven't already watched our other episodes on the praying mantis, make sure that you do. And there's one that's really fun uh, of a praying mantis eating a cockroach. If you enjoyed this read aloud and activity, remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe so that you never miss another episode. We'll see you soon. Let's go take a look at the life cycle of a grasshopper. I mean, 